Cedric Maxwell could score around the rim constantly at a high field goal percentage, even leading the NBA twice in the category, while being able to grab rebounds at a high rate as he knew how to position himself rather well, also matching up consistently night to night against the best players on defense, helping Cedric Maxwell be a part of a lot of winning basketball over his career, whether it was in the beginning in college with Charlotte making it to the Final Four or the NBA with the Celtics, winning two NBA championships and even picking up the finals MVP one year, complementing Larry Bird's style of play rather nicely, while also being a larger than life person throughout the whole journey. This is a look back on Cedric Maxwell's career. Cedric Maxwell was born and raised in Kinston, North Carolina, where Maxwell would pick up the game of basketball thanks to his mom, who was a former college basketball player and Cedric Maxwell would attend Kinston High School in the area, where he stood out catching the eyes of a local school in the University of North Carolina, Charlotte. And Cedric Maxwell decided to commit to Charlotte. And Maxwell in his first two seasons was just a role player on the team, but during this time, he would pick up his nickname that would stick with him the rest of his career in Cornbread from a college teammate as he called him it after watching the movie Cornbread Earl and Me, thinking he was similar to Cornbread in the movie. Maxwell entering his junior year started to take over the team, averaging 20 points and 12.1 rebounds, where Maxwell started to become nationally recognized after leading the 49ers to the NIT Finals and picking up the tournament MVP. Cedric Maxwell entering his senior year had higher expectations put on him, where he delivered, increasing his averages to 22.3 points, 12.1 rebounds, leading Charlotte to the Sun Belt regular season and tournament champion. For Cedric Maxwell's efforts, he was named Sunbelt Player of the Year and was also named an All-American. In entering the NCAA tournament, Charlotte would make a run to the Final Four, picking up wins against Central Michigan, Syracuse, and Michigan, as Maxwell led the team throughout in scoring in every single game, and most of the time rebounding as well. In the Final Four, Charlotte met Marquette. And the game would be an all-time classic, as Jerome Whitehead and Cedric Maxwell went back and forth scoring seeing the game tied up late with Marquette having the ball, as they would launch it the length of the court to Whitehead, who would hit the shot at the buzzer, ending Charlotte's run, where Marquette would go on to pick up the championship in the next game afterwards. Though it was a heartbreaking end for Cedric Maxwell to his college career, he had played well over the tournament, making the all-tournament team, and was garnering serious interest from the NBA now. Cedric Maxwell left Charlotte for the NBA as its all-time leader in total and per game in rebounds as well as field goal percentage. In the 1977 NBA Draft, with the 12th overall pick, the Boston Celtics selected Cedric Maxwell. Maxwell was joining an aging Celtics team led by John Havlicek, Dave Cowens, and Jojo White, where Maxwell came off the bench his rookie year, averaging 7.3 points and 5.3 rebounds. For a Celtics team that struggled, going 32 and 50, missing the playoffs for the first time in a while, and after the disappointing year, John Havlicek would decide to retire after a long career. That was only the beginning of the roster shakeup, as Boston would trade for Tiny Archibald. In mid-season, more trades would only come, seeing JoJo White sent away and Bob McAdoo acquired in separate deals. In the end, the moves would benefit Cedric Maxwell the most as he would take over the starting position on the team and become the focal point on offense, averaging 19 points, 9.9 rebounds, and led the league in field goal percentage at 58.4%. But he was on a rebuilding Celtics team that played poorly, going 29-53, and missing the playoffs. After the season, Bob McAdoo would be traded away for future picks after not quite fitting in with the team. But the most important move of the offseason would be the signing of Larry Bird to a contract who was drafted the other year. Cedric Maxwell was skeptical at first if Bird could really play and he could live up to all the hype, entering their very first practice, challenging him and going at it the whole entire time. And by the end of practice, Cedric Maxwell had left with a newfound respect, saying, in quote, that white boy can play. With the addition of Bird, Maxwell became the second option on the team, averaging 16.9 points, 8.8 rebounds, and for the second year in a row, led the league in field goal percentage at 60.9%. With the addition of Larry Bird, the Celtics had looked like a completely new team, going 61-21, and getting the one seed in the East, meeting Moses Malone, Calvin Murphy, and the Rockets in the playoffs. Moses Malone would look like the best player in this series, but his play alone could not slow down the new Celtics duo of Bird and Maxwell as they swept the Rockets. Round 2, the Celtics met their rivals in the Philadelphia 76ers, led by Julius Irving, Bobby Jones, Maurice Cheeks, and Daryl Dawkins. 
The series would have several close games, but when it mattered most, the 76ers consistently prevailed late behind Dr. J, winning the series 4-1. Cedric Maxwell in his first postseason experience had ex elevated his play, averaging 18.2 points, 10 rebounds, and of course led the playoffs in field goal percentage at 63.4. In the offseason, the pick that the Celtics had acquired for Bob McAdoo had paid off, turning into the first overall pick, which would end up being Joe Barry Carroll. And that pick would be traded in a deal that might go down as one of the more lopsided trades in NBA history, sending it to the Warriors for two future Hall of Famers and Robert Parrish and Kevin McHale. The deal was also done by the Celtics to fill the hole at center as Dave Cowens had retired. With the move, Cedric Maxwell would get less touches within the offense, but was still the third option on the team behind Parrish and Bird. Maxwell on the season would average 15.2 points and 6.5 rebounds, helping the Boston Celtics pick up another number one seed for the second year in a row, going 62-20. and 20. The Celtics took care of business in its first series, sweeping Artis Gilmore, Reggie Theus, and the Chicago Bulls. In the Eastern Conference Finals awaiting the Celtics were none other than the Philadelphia 76ers again, who had improved as well with the addition of Andrew Toney. The 76ers jumped out to a 3-1 lead in the series behind Andrew's Toney starting to break out. The 76ers only needed one more win to make it to the NBA Finals and send the Celtics home, but they would proceed to have their hearts broken again and again by the Celtics, losing Game 5 and 6 by 2 points before dropping Game 7 by 1 as they failed to get the final shot off, with the series going down to some as the best of all time as 5 games were decided by 2 or less points, and the Celtics having the improbable comeback from down 3-1. Cedric Maxwell this series though would be most remembered for fighting a fan in Game 6 having the NBA create new protocols that would result in the suspension if a player went into the stands to fight. But, as it was the 80s, Cedric Maxwell avoided suspension. In the NBA Finals, the Boston Celtics met the Houston Rockets, still led by Moses Malone. The Celtics would win Game 1 late, with the highlight moment of the game being Larry Bird's famous putback. Game 2, the Houston Rockets responded from a good game from Malone. The Celtics and Rockets went on to split the next two games as Maxwell was leading the team in both games and scoring, with the series tied up entering Game 5. Game 5, Cedric Maxwell took over, scoring 28 points and grabbing 15 rebounds, leading the Celtics to a blowout win and one win away from winning the title. Game 6, the Celtics would go up big on the Rockets early before going cold from the floor seeing Houston pull it close before Larry Bird broke out of his shooting slump this series, along with several big plays from Cedric Maxwell, helping the Boston Celtics win the NBA championship. And for Cedric Maxwell's role in playing so phenomenally this series, he would win the finals MVP, as he had led the Celtics with 17.7 points to go along with 9.5 rebounds. Entering next season, the Celtics would have its core back and had added Danny Ainge through the draft in hopes of repeating. Maxwell had played a similar role as the year prior, averaging 14.8 points, 6.4 rebounds, again helping the Celtics go to another number one seed, going 63-19. and In the playoffs, the Celtics met the Washington Bullets, who had Spencer Haywood, Jeff Ruland, and Greg Ballard. Parrish and Haywood this series would play great against each other, going back and forth throughout, but the Celtics had more firepower overall, winning the series 4-1. Making it into the Eastern Conference Finals, the Celtics met the Philadelphia 76ers again. The series would start off well for the Celtics as they blew out the 76ers by 40 in what most considered to be the Mother's Day Massacre game. The smack in the face did seem to wake up the 76ers though as they rallied, winning the next three games behind Andrew Toney, who was growing his Boston Strangler legacy. But just like the other year, the 76ers crumbled, losing the next two games, creating a Game 7 in Boston, with many critics thinking the 76ers were going to give away the series again and Boston was going to go his glorious comeback. But in Game 7, as per usual against Boston, Andrew Toney stepped up his play, helping send the Celtics home 120-106. Over the run to the Eastern Conference Finals, Cedric Maxwell had averaged 14.5 points and 7.3 rebounds. As the next season came around, Cedric Maxwell again would find himself getting less touches in the offense as Kevin McHale was starting to find his form, resulting in Maxwell's numbers dipping to 11.9 points and 5.3 rebounds. Meanwhile, the Celtics dropped a couple more regular season games this year 
as Archibald missed some time, resulting in a 56-26 record, entering as a three seed in the playoffs. Round one, the Celtics faced an Atlanta Hawks team led by Dan Roundfield and a rookie in Dominique Wilkins. The Celtics and Hawks would split the first two games in the best of three series as Roundfield and Bird led both victories. Game three would be a physical battle with even a fight breaking out between Ainge and Tree Rollins, but the Celtics would hold on to win comfortably, advancing to the next round, where the Celtics would play the Milwaukee Bucks with Marcus Johnson, Sidney Moncrief, Junior Bridgman, and Bob Lanier. Marcus Johnson and Sidney Moncrief played incredible this series. Meanwhile, the Celtics struggled to get going at all, resulting in a stunning sweep sending the Celtics home 4-0. Cedric Maxwell over the postseason had averaged 12.9 points and 7.3 rebounds. In the offseason, the Boston Celtics would make another steal of a trade in acquiring Dennis Johnson from the Suns for hardly nothing. With the move, the Celtics would let go of Tiny Archibald though. The move did see Maxwell take less shots within the offense, but he would put up similar numbers to the year prior with 11.9 points and 5.8 rebounds. Meanwhile, the move for Johnson had moved the Celtics back to the best in the East again, going 62-20. Round 1, the Celtics met the Washington Bullets, headed by Jeff Ruland, and the series was physical at times as Jeff Ruland played great, but ultimately the Celtics had more talent behind Bird, advancing 3-1. Round 2, the Celtics faced the New York Knicks, led by Bernard King and Bill Cartwright. Bernard King was entering the series hot, scoring 40 points regularly. With Cedric Maxwell having to guard him, he was asked about it, and Maxwell said, And I state, ain't no female dog is going to score 40 on me. The Celtics would win the first two games of the series before the Knicks, behind none other than Bernard King, won the next two games. The Celtics would win Game 5 before the Knicks responded as Bernard King scored 44 points, forcing a Game 7. With the infamous headline, the female dog is back being printed a lot. But in Game 7, behind a big game from Larry Bird, the Celtics would finish off the Knicks. With Bernard King later giving credit to Maxwell as being one of the tougher defenders he had to face. In the Eastern Conference Finals, the Celtics would meet the team who had swept them the prior year in the Milwaukee Bucks, but this time it was different as the Celtics had revenge on their minds led by Bird. The Celtics took it to the Bucks consistently, winning via a gentleman's sweep. Awaiting the Celtics in the NBA Finals now was a highly anticipated matchup with the Los Angeles Lakers, who had an equally as talented team as the Celtics did, with Magic Johnson, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, James Worthy, Byron Scott, Michael Cooper, and Bob McAdoo. The Celtics would drop Game 1 before responding Game 2 when Gerald Henderson stole a pass from Worthy, scoring and tying the game up before going on to win in overtime. Game 3, the Lakers demolished the Celtics, which seemed to set a fire under the Celtics to toughen things up as they would have to have a physical practice before Game 4, and McHale would set the tone in Game 4, clotheslining Kurt Rambis and later on, Larry Bird and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar would have to be separated. Cedric Maxwell would further antagonize the Lakers late in the game, as James Worthy missed a free throw and then proceeded to walk past him doing the choking gesture. With all of this seemed to be paying off for the Celtics as they had forced the game to go to overtime where they would win behind a jumper late from Bird. Game 5 would be the heat game as Boston Garden was without AC seeing the temperature rise up to 97 degrees, which favored the Celtics as Larry Bird picked apart the Lakers winning the game. Game 6 the Lakers would bring some of their own toughness seeing James Worthy shove Cedric Maxwell into the basket support. The Lakers would win the game behind Jabbar forcing Game 7. Game 7 was again another hot one back in Boston sitting at 91 degrees this time. Before Game 7, Cedric Maxwell came up to his teammates and stated, You, female dogs, get on my back, I'm going to carry you, where Maxwell proceeded to do just that, leading the Celtics with 24 points, 8 rebounds, and 8 assists, helping them win the NBA championship. And over the run to a second ring for Cedric Maxwell, he had averaged 11.9 points, 5.2 rebounds. Entering the next year, the Celtics would be again looking to repeat with Cedric Maxwell playing a similar role as he would average 11.1 points and 4.2 rebounds. That is when he was healthy, as he only managed to go for 57 games, seeing his playing time reduced along the way. 
where Maxwell would start to rub off on some of his teammates wrong as he still kept to be his happy over the top personality despite not playing. And Maxwell struggling to find his form coming back entering the playoffs again where the Boston Celtics entered as the one seed after going 63-19, and getting a round one matchup against the Cleveland Cavaliers headed by World B. Free and Roy Henson. The series had multiple tightly contested games, but when it mattered most, the Celtics kept pulling away late, winning the series 3-1. Round two, the Celtics played the Detroit Pistons with Isaiah Thomas, Bill Lambeer, Vinny Johnson, and Kelly Trapuca. The Celtics would jump out to a 2-0 lead behind Bird and Parrish, yet the Pistons fought back tying the series up behind Vinny Johnson's Game 4. The scare seemed to push Larry Bird to up his play with the Celtics winning the next two games thanks to him, making it to the Eastern Conference Finals to face none other than the Philadelphia 76ers, who had changed since the prior matchup now having Moses Malone and Charles Barkley to go along with Irving. Over the series, the Celtics were somewhat capable to slow down Malone thanks to Parrish, seeing the Celtics win the series in Game 5 late as Bird stole the ball from Andrew Toney. Making it back to the NBA Finals, the Celtics ran into the Lakers again. The Celtics would take Game 1 in a blowout as Kareem Abdul-Jabbar played poorly, but in Game 2, Kareem bounced back helping the Lakers tie the series up. Game 3, the Celtics would jump out to an early lead before the Lakers responded on a run of their own which the Celtics never recovered from. Game 4 was a nail biter going back and forth before Dennis Johnson tied the series up on a buzzer beater. Game 5, the Lakers took an early lead and held on throughout to go up 3-2 before they would win the series and the championship in Game 6 as Boston went cold from the floor in the third quarter. Cedric Maxwell over the postseason had played a smaller role coming back from injury and struggling to find his form, where he came off the bench to average 3.8 points and 2.4 rebounds this postseason. After the season, the Celtics had decided to trade Maxwell because of how he had dealt with being injured and had created a rift with the front office and his teammates. Cedric Maxwell was traded with the first round pick that became Arvidas Sabonis to the Los Angeles Clippers for Bill Walton. Maxwell was now joining a struggling Clippers team led by Marcus Johnson and Norm Nixon, where Cedric Maxwell would fit in as the third option, averaging 14.1 points and 8.2 rebounds. Yet the addition of Maxwell and him finding his form again did not help the Clippers out as they had another poor year as they went 32-50 and 50 missing the playoffs. Cedric Maxwell would enter the next season with the Clippers as they seemed to be going in the wrong direction very early again. As Cedric Maxwell was still an asset, the Clippers decided to continue the rebuild further since they were not going to be doing much winning. Trading Cedric Maxwell to the Houston Rockets for two picks that became Joe Wolf and Chucky Brown. Maxwell was joining a playoff caliber Rockets team led by Hakeem Olajuwon and Ralph Sampson, where Cedric Maxwell would come off the bench to see his numbers dip on the season to 10 points and 5.4 rebounds. But he was back on a playoff team that went 42-40 and and entered the playoffs as a 6 seed, which was misleading as Samson had missed a fair amount of time due to injury, but had forced himself to come back early for the playoffs. In round 1, the Rockets played the Portland Trailblazers led by Kiki Vandeweghe, Clyde Drexler, Terry Porter, and Steve Johnson. Over the series, Elijah One helped the Rockets look like they were the higher seed from the get-go, winning the series rather soundly 3-1. Round 2, the Rockets met the Seattle Supersonics, who were hot at the right time behind the play of Dale Ellis, Tom Chambers, and Xavier McDaniel. Dale Ellis this series elevated his play to match Elijah Wan's big performances, but Elijah Wan would not get enough support as the Sonics continued their hot streak in their run, advancing in 6 games. In the playoffs, Cedric Maxwell had averaged 6.2 points and 3.3 rebounds. Entering next season, Ralph Sampson would be butting heads with head coach Bill Fitch, resulting in the Rockets trading him to the Warriors for Joe Barry Carroll and Sleepy Floyd. Maxwell would take on a smaller role this year, averaging 3.8 points and 2.5 rebounds, playing on 11 minutes a night. Meanwhile, the new Rockets team built around Elijah One went 46-36, and 36, getting into the playoffs as a 6 seed. Facing the Dallas Mavericks round one, led by Mark Aguirre, Rolando Blackman, and Derek Harper. 
and in an all too similar tale to the prior year, Elijah would play great, but it was not enough as the Mavericks were a more well rounded team, winning the series 3 1. Over the series, Maxwell played sparingly, averaging 0.5 points, and after the year in a diminished role, Cedric Maxwell would decide to retire. Over 11 years in the NBA, Cedric Maxwell had averaged 12.5 points, 6.3 rebounds, while shooting 54.6% from the floor. Cedric Maxwell in retirement would mend fences with the Celtics, coming back for Larry Bird's retirement ceremony, returning to the Boston Garden for the first time, where when introduced to give his turn to speak, Maxwell would receive a standing ovation even though things did not end on the best of notes in a moment which he still cherishes fondly to today, as you can see him getting choked up a little bit in the moment. And Cedric Maxwell would continue to mend fences with teammates in the front office afterwards before being invited back to be the color analyst on the radio for the Boston Celtics games, where he is still today with the Celtics. Maxwell would also get his number retired by the Boston Celtics for being an integral part of two championship teams. Cedric Maxwell would be remembered for being able to score around the rim at a high rate, leading the league twice in field goal percentage, whether it was scoring from the post or getting downhill and attacking the rim on the break. On top of being a great rebounder who knew how to position himself and seal his man out for a board, with lots of team success along the way, whether it was in college taking Charlotte to the Final Four or with the Boston Celtics winning two championships and picking up a Finals MVP as well, elevating his play when it mattered most, throughout always being true to himself with the big personality. Cornbread could flat out ball and was more than entertaining. Thanks for watching this video on Cedric Maxwell's career. If you want to see any other videos about any other random players in the future, leave them in the comments below. Who knows, I may decide to do them, I may not, you never know. Thanks again for watching, this has been Skid Denver.